Hi everyone, my name is Margaret Reinstein, former bus head on NCSY Give and advisor for New Jersey and upstate New York regions, and I'm excited to learn some tour with you today. One of the beautiful things of this world is that we're not all an open book. Can you imagine living in a world where if you had a bad thought, what you were thinking would flash above your head? Or if you couldn't control when you wanted to say something negative? Imagine if every time you said something mean about someone else, there would be some sort of sign on your body to show it. Those are really scary thoughts, but actually ones that weren't so far into the Jewish people. This week's Parshio, Tazria and Mitzorah, speak about the plague of Sarat, some sort of skin disease where patches of your skin would become white and there would be hairs that would stick out of it. And the Jewish people would receive this punishment for various forms of transgressions that they committed. But Sarat is actually not only on the skin. There are three kinds of Sarat. There's Sarat on the skin, Sarat on your clothing, on garments, and there's Sarat on people's homes, which is what we'll be focusing on. It caught my eye because Sarat on the home seems to be fundamentally different than the other two. Aside from the fact that it's textually separate and in a different parsha than the other forms of Sarat on our skin and our clothing, the language is really strange. Listen to the Pasuk. Says, Kitabo'u el Eretz Kanaan, Ashera Ninotain Lachem Lachuza. When you go to Eretz Kanaan, the land of Kanaan, Israel, that I am giving to you in your possession as an inheritance, Vinatati Nega Sarat, and I will give to you the plague of Sarat. It says that God will give us this plague, as if it's a gift. Rabbanit Rimon points out that it actually seems like something positive. When it comes to the other two forms of Sarat, the Torah writes how we would expect to see it. If someone gets Sarat on the skin, if someone gets Sarat on the clothing, something we obviously don't want. But this one seems to say, Vinatati nega Sarat, and I will give to you like a present. It's also strange because it seems to be something which only happens in Israel, meaning the other two made no such specification. Sarat on the home says, though, that it's going to be when we enter into Eretz Israel. So our first question is, is there something actually positive about Sarat that God wants to give it to us? And second, what's the connection between Israel and Sarat on the homes? Well, one simple answer to the second question is that while we were in the desert, we were given these laws and Sarat simply couldn't apply it. We didn't have physical homes. But still, couldn't there be Sarat on the tents or something? I think that there is something more fundamental to it. So we'll get back to that. For now, what is the meaning of the seemingly positive approach that the Torah takes towards Sarat on the homes? So there's a midrash in Vayikra Rabbah which describes how when the Jews came to conquer Canaan, the Canaanite citizens hid their treasures in their homes so that the Jews wouldn't find them. And how the Sarat of the home, when that would happen and we would take apart the house, we would actually help uncover these treasures. So I think that's a really cool idea. But still, Sarat on the homes is described as a plague. It causes homes to be taken apart. Ritual impurity is not a good thing. On the contrary, Vayikra Rabbah lists 10 different transgressions that could cause this disease. Yalkut Shimoni lists 11. Plagues are either warnings for punishment or punishment themselves. So what's this all about? How could this be a good thing that God wants to give to us? Rabbanit Ramon brings another midrash in Vayikra Rabbah that says that the plague was because of stinginess. It records how one woman would say to her neighbor, can you lend me some wheat? The neighbor would say, I have none. The woman would ask, then, can I have some barley? And the neighbor would again say, I have none. Can I have a sifter? The neighbor would say, I have, I don't have one. So what would Hashem do? He would bring a plague to the houses, and when the neighbor needs to take out all of his belongings because of the sarat on his house, everyone would really see how much he really had. So according to this midrash, sarat comes from miserliness, from being stingy, from not giving to others. Okay, so that's not so nice. But is it really a sin? Does it say somewhere in the Torah that you need to lend wheat to your neighbor? Maybe not, but it certainly is a negative character trait. This Midrash seems to be saying that Sarat isn't really a punishment for something as much as it is a personal call to the house owner, a catalyst for change that would cause a person to mend their ways, that through this experience, it would teach the neighbor to share and to give more to others. The Kliyakar says this point in a different way, by showing how strange it is that the Torah says, and I will give the plague of Sarat in the house of your possession. Why does it have to say the house of your possession? We know whose house we're referring to. Maybe that's emphasizing the problem though. Maybe this person who has Sarat on his house sees the house as his possession and only his, not 
conscious of the fact that it's really all God's land. He feels it belongs solely to him. So the Sarat comes and reminds him how easily that house could literally come apart. God sends that blade to send him a message. If the person sees the Sarat and gets the message, the house isn't destroyed. It's only if after seven days the person has not repented, then yes, the house would get taken apart. It's clear that Hashem doesn't want to harm us. He doesn't want to embarrass us. In fact, the Sarat on the house really does only send a warning to us. The Medrash Tan Chuma writes that first Hashem would put Sarat on the house. Then, if the person still doesn't get the message to improve, Hashem would plague his clothing. Finally, if the person still doesn't get the message after the house and after the closing, then he would plague the person's skin. With this approach, the Sarat on the house is actually a helpful warning. Rather than Hashem immediately striking the person himself with Sarat. And the cool thing is that these warnings are unique to the land of Israel, where the Kedusha is so strong, a land whose homes won't tolerate sin or corruption. God's land is unable to bear such a house which denies God's ownership. So taking a step back, imagining a world with Sarah today, would it really be so bad? To be on such a high spiritual level that God will give us Sarah, that he'll help lead us to maintaining more moral and more spiritual lives, sounds pretty good to me. Sounds like something, ironically, we should actually be yearning for. This week is not only the Parshiot of Tarzira Matsura, but it's also the holidays of Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaTzma'ut, days where we appreciate the land of Israel, God's miracles, and hope for a time where his tough love and spiritual guidance will be so present in our lives again. Thanks for learning with me, and Shabbat Shalom.